The month of January has been full of ski trips, winter van dwelling, and exploring new places. As we finally begin to get some snow, we've been taking full advantage of the weekends to spend time in Luna and go skiing. In episode 11, we find ourselves at Snow Basin Resort, joined by loads of other people. Morning squad, welcome to episode 11 of season two. This is kind of an odd weekend for me because I had no plan. Nothing was really working out. I got entirely closed out of skiing at Park City. So instead I came up to Northern Utah and I am at Snow Basin Resort. I was here probably about a month ago now. It's my first time ever at Snow Basin but there was just absolutely no snow. We're gonna take it easy, just cruise around and have fun this weekend, um, enjoy skiing for what it is. I'm trying something new this morning. It's Kodiak Cakes oatmeal, like in a cup with chocolate chips. It's actually really, really good. It looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day up there. Like the sun is coming out and it seems like once we get above the clouds, it should be really nice but it is incredibly windy, even down here. So I'm concerned that as soon as we start to get up on a lift, it might get rather uncomfortable, but I guess we'll find out. It's all part of skiing. I'm using a little different pole this week, and I want to show you guys kind of the differences in the poles that I like to use as the season changes. I kind of have a, I don't really know what to call it. It's not really a sponsorship, but it's like a partnership with a company called Zipline, which is the poles I use, the gloves, the goggles, things like that. They're actually um, like an official supplier of the U.S. ski team for a lot of the Mogul World Cup guys. So basically up until now, I've been using this, um, I think it's called the Podium 14.0 or something like that. Um, it's completely made out of Kevlar, um, very, very lightweight, super strong. Um, and you can see like the basket on it. Let's see, can you guys... Okay, so as we get more snow and there's actually some more base now, I'm changing over to what they call the lollipop pole, um, which is one of my favorites. I've used this for a long time now, this exact pole. But look at the difference. Look at the difference in the basket. So you can see that basket compared to this basket. Focus, cool. Well, this pole is actually more of a big mountain pole because when I'm kind of trekking through the snow to get to places, that other basket just sinks right through and it basically is useless when I'm trying to push myself through places. So that's why I bring this pole out later in the season when there's more snow because this basket just helps stay above the snow just like a wider ski would. And the swing weight, which is basically how the pole kind of kicks out when you're doing pole planting, is a little bit different than this more mogul pole. This is not made out of Kevlar. It's still kind of the same sort of composite, but it has a, it's a little bit more um, it's not as stiff is what I'm trying to say. So it's just a little bit more forgiving when you're kind of in tricky scenarios where this pole is a lot more stiff, very much just for like hands in front pole planting going down a mogul course. I know you guys asked about my ski equipment. I'm gonna do a separate video just on my ski gear, but I figured it'd be cool just to tell you about my poles, largely because I'm like just delaying going out because it just is so windy. I know it's gonna be really, really cold. <laughs> But anyways, I just gotta get up there and get it done. So, zip line. Those are the poles I use. Now that I'm looking back, I can see all the signs. I tried to fill in the cracks that were spreading in my mind. But I was all out of hope, lost in an endless maze. The emptiness had afforded it, just like a void. Finally made it out here onto the mountain, guys. I'm not kidding you, the line probably took about 30 minutes just to get into the gondola. So it was a super, super long line back all the way up like into like the main area of the village. It was pretty insane. And any lift I tried to get to, it was the same way. So I pushed over to the strawberry side. So hopefully that'll kind of, the lines won't be as bad down there, but I really have no idea. It's time to get a run in me. It's been, it's almost like 11 o'clock. It just took me like an hour just to get up here after I left the van. So time to ski. that 
first line was bad, which was probably like a 25 minute wait, we just waited here at Strawberry for I would say probably over 30 minutes, which is just insane. This has honestly been probably one of the worst ski experiences I've ever had. I did not expect Snow Basin to be this crowded. That's why I came here. The line is literally going all the way up, almost to like the bottom of the first run, which is just absolutely insane. So I don't really know what the move is right now. I'm gonna see if I can traverse my way over to the other side of the mountain and if the lines are that bad at the bottom I might just take a break in the van for a little bit um, because this is just I've probably been up here for almost like two hours and I really haven't even skied yet I've just been waiting in a line and uh, this is just really really brutal so we're about to load the gondola here soon but it's literally been almost like 40 minutes which is just nuts I must say this has probably been one of the most uncomfortable ski days that I've had this year. Not only were the lines about like 20 to 30 minutes in the morning, I think even longer than that. The wind has been just absolutely crazy. So it's been quite the day. I've honestly just been skiing a few laps just to get moving because I felt like I've waited here for such a long time without skiing. So something that's been really cool is I, I hit what's called the Allen Peak Tram, which is essentially the Olympic Tram. So they used to have one of the Olympic, I think like the downhill runs or something up here. So they installed a tram um, that kind of takes you up a little 500 feet of vert to the top of the bowl. Um, so that's kind of a cool feature. So I think what I'm gonna do is one more of those. It's about like three o'clock right now. So I think if I do one more of those and maybe just work some more vert, um, that should be a, a pretty good day for what it was worth. Hard to have a bad day when you're out skiing. So that's the deal with that. But um, it's one of those days where like the sweat is starting to just get so cold because it's so incredibly windy. Um, but uh, anyways, one more run here. Lots of fun. Double black diamond terrain only. There are no green or blue trails down from this lift. You may ride the lift back to the bottom. Please read all posted signs. Do not ski your snowboard in closed areas. Leaving snow basins marked ski area is not recommended and any rescue, any rescue outside of these boundaries will be at the person's expense. If you have any questions, please contact Ski Patrol. Have a great one, guys. Thank you. We made it up here to the very top of Snow Basin. Look at the view behind me. You can see the entire Ogden Valley, the lake. It's pretty incredible. But we are basically at the very top point here. And there's a little chute that I've been heading through here that I think is pretty cool. Very short, kind of mellow. But um, plan is to rip that and then head down. So really cool little uh, tram you can take called the Allen, Allen Peak, I think. So uh, time to go.
massive vert over on this run, which is nice. Look how beautiful it is behind me. Four fifty, almost five o'clock, and I have no idea what the plan is. All I know is that tomorrow I'm skiing Powder Mountain, so I need to try to find um, like a Walmart place to get some groceries and a place to sleep for the night. And I really have no leads or anything like that. So I think the move is just gonna be head back, maybe down towards Ogden or something like that, where it's a little bit more populated of a city, and then make the drive to Powder Mountain tomorrow morning. But for now, let's get out of here. sunset guys this guy was just like absolutely on fire as i drove down the canyon i also think i found a spot i'm gonna sleep tonight just kind of up the road but luckily I, I stumbled upon this fresh market so i'm gonna get a few things for dinner and then uh go back to that campsite successful store run. Got some more water, sausage for tonight, rolls for said sausage, some salad. It's still such a beautiful night. You get, you see that behind me? Like, I'm down in Ogden. It is probably like 45 degrees right now. It is like, it's warm. Van life is so much easier, even just when it's above freezing. But when it's so cold, the van is just, everything is like 10 times harder. Let's go to that campsite campsite it's more or less a trailhead i'm gonna see if there's no signs about no overnight parking looks like my idea is not going to work at this current spot i don't know why but i was craving uh like a sausage sandwich so bad salad two hoagies depending on where you're from i guess let's say sausage sandwich Trying to find a place to park here for the night. And I might just do some sort of residential thing here almost. I see some other cars parked on the side of the street. Doesn't really say anything about no parking. And like I said, there's a car here. There's a few cars over there. And there's even like another RV down that way. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna give it a go. This is stealth camping urban stealth camping at its finest here. It's parked up on the side of the street, but I think, it, I think it's gonna have to work. Van life. First thing you wanna do when you're stealth camping is to just close down your head, like close everything down right away. So these are blackout, which is why I got them, but to make it so I can turn all my lights on and not have to worry about someone seeing what's inside here. So slanted though, which kind of sucks. I think that's the spot for the night. Windows are covered. Pretty good. <laughs> 